Hello everyone and in this lesson we're going to take a look at the new baking tools in COPS in Houdini 21. So I'm going to create a small rock and then we'll create like a low res version and a high res version and then we'll bake the high res data to the low res. So this is the low res rock that I have and this is the high res. So we'll first make these two and then we'll do the COP setup. So I'm just going to duplicate this okay, because this is like the easiest thing. So the easiest way to make a rock is uh, take a sphere, give it like a lot of segments and then take a mountain sop and keep it to, uh, where are we? Yeah, keep it to Worley cellular F1, like that's it. Okay, and then you just play around with the element size and you'll get a nice looking rock. Okay, and then you play around with offset and you'll just get like different results. So this is literally like the easiest way to make a rock. Okay, so now uh, I also have like a transform. I'll turn it off for now. But if you just want to like rotate it and get different results. Okay, so the first thing I'll do is I'm going to take a poly reduce and we'll create a low res version. So I'm just going to take this and we'll take a poly reduce and I'm going to bring it down to like 5%. So it's pretty low. Then apply some normals to this. I'll do face area, I'll bring this down to about 20. So it's fairly sort of sharp like that. And then lastly, we want to give it some UV. So there is a new tool in Houdini 21 called uh, flatten by points. So what you can do is you can just scatter some points on this, like maybe five or 10 points. And you'll use those points and generate like a UV map. So what you can do is just take a, take a UV flatten and you'll get UV flatten from points and connect this and connect that. And in the point source, change it to second input. And what you'll get is this. Now, if it does leave out some blank spaces, what you can do is just come into the flatten node and you'll have something, you'll, there'll be a tab called post-processing and turn off ignore distorted faces. So it will sort of, it'll take care of that. Now, uh, what you can also do is if you want it to be a little bit better, like I was trying this out, I don't know if it will be better or not, but what you can do is take a group node and we can try to scatter the points only on like the sharp areas. So we can use like the curvature to decide where the points will be. Okay, so what you do is you take this, set it to primitives. Let's call this curve. Come to include by edges and turn on minimum angle. So what will happen is it will only select like, you know, areas which are, you know, sharp. Okay, And then use that to scatter the point. So in the scatter, you set the group to curve. So it's sort of scattering on like sort of like the planar areas. And that should hopefully give you slightly better UVs. If you can do some math and figure out the exact corners of your planes, it might give you a better result. But I am not that good at it, so I'm not going to try. Okay, so you can just sort of like change the global seed and you know get different results. You can see this like if I press enter, you know, so it generates pretty decent UVs. Like for our purposes right now, it's pretty good. Okay, so this is done. The next step is to create uh, the high res version. So what we're going to do for the high res is I'm going to use a VDB from polygons. I'll set this to, if the reason I'm getting these black spots is because ambient occlusion is on, so I'll turn that off. So I'll make it 0 0.02. Let's go to 0 0.007. Yeah, I think that's good enough. And uh, turn on fill interior. And change the name distance VDB to, uh, you, can set, you can set it to density. Because uh, we're going to use like a volume warp, so add some noise to this. You can sort of plug it, plug it to surface, but this just makes it easier. Okay, so now type in warp and you'll get something called volume warp. Just jump in there. So we need to do a couple of things. Like th this is actually pretty simple. So we can just take a turbulent noise and I'm going to put in like a, yeah, I'll plug in the position and then take a fit range and take a multiply constant and like lower this a lot and then take an add and plug this in there and there you go and you'll get some noise on this 
but let's just make it slightly better so what i'll do is i'm going to take this slightly high and then we'll take the fit range and sort of squeeze it down so you get like you know patches like these and then i want uh, i want them to be like sharp cuts okay like vertical cut so what i can do is i can take the x frequency to 10 see we can get that and that isn't bad actually except this is too uh, deep so we'll just have to like lower it till it's like that i think that is good enough and we'll lower the z axis to like 0 0.5 so you'll get like more of these we can try to lower this to 0 0.1 see there you go so you'll get like more yeah so you can get stuff like this anyways let, let's keep it to 20 let's keep this to 0.5 as well Okay, so that's as far as, you know, this is concerned. Then you can sort of define, you can increase the roughness if you want, like don't increase it too much, it looks bad. Now, this is something new I learned, okay, because uh, I was trying to figure out how to rotate this and I found a file which was showing me how to rotate a noise map. And Houdini being Houdini, this is relatively complicated. Okay, so what we need is uh, take a quaternion node and we need an angle value and an axis. Okay, so just take two constant values. So this will be my angle and this will be my axis. And then we turn the quaternion into, uh, we type, type in rotate and you'll get rotate by quaternion. So this goes in there and the position comes in here. So firstly, this only takes in radians. So the angle value has to be turned to radians. So type in degrees to radians. Yeah, I had to find a file for this. Otherwise I wouldn't have figured this out. Okay, and then change this to the axis will be, so we'll change it to three floats. I'll keep it to one in the X axis and plug that in. And the position comes in here. So that data goes into the turbulent noise. And now if I take this and do like 45, then uh, hold on, there you go, see, so now you can rotate this. So if I, if I take this and I sort of, see, so that allows me to rotate my noise map. So this is good, I think we are in a good position. Okay, another thing that we can do with this, because I'm sort of wasting time here, uh, if you want it to fade out in a particular axis, like let's say we want the scratches to be at the base and not too much at the, at the top, we can uh, fade this out using the bounding box. So take relative to bounding box, plug in the output into the file and the position into P and then do a vector to float and we'll extract one of the axis, then take a fit range. So let's pick up the Y axis and I'm going to multiply this, multiply the noise map with that, with our axis. So plug this in and there you go. You can see it. So we'll switch this out. See, there you go. Okay, and then we can also like, you know, squeeze it in a bit. So you can, you know, make adjustments like that. So we can, so now we don't have too much on the top and less at the bottom. Uh, I want to adjust this. Let's make it two. Yeah, I think that's better. So we have a rock. So this is our high res rock. Let's make this 0 0.004. Yeah, there you go. This is nice. And then I can just give it a slight bit of smoothing. So let's do a SDF smooth. Uh, not that much. Let's like lower it a bit. Yeah, I think this is fine. And then convert this to polygons. So do convert VDB to polygons and plug that in. Now I want to do like one last thing with this which is uh, I want to calculate the slope, okay, because I can use that to sort of add like grass on top or something. So what I'll do is just type in slope. So if you have the lab tools installed, there'll be something called slope. Okay, so just plug that in and there you go, you have slope. Uh, the only thing is I don't want to output color. So we just want to output an attribute called slope, which you can see, like if you click here on I and you have a slope attribute. So you can calculate other attributes as well. Like if you want to calculate curvature and whatever random stuff you want to calculate, you can, okay, and then you can bring that into COPS. But anyways, this is fine. So just take a null here and we'll call this, uh, we'll call it out high res and this will be out low res. So we have our stuff in place. This is good. Now let's take a COP network. So I'll call this 
rock network and what you want to do is just type in bake and you'll get something called as bake setup okay so you get bake geometry textures which is just a node on its own you don't want that if you type in bake setup it it's like a recipe which is ready made so you can just use that we don't need the cage because i haven't tried the cage either so we'll just remove that and uh, so you pick the low res and the high res and that's pretty much it so you can just come in here uh, out low res one and we need out high res one and that's it so if you click here it will bake it for you see there you go it's pretty much done like it's fast and you want to do a few things so what i want is uh, i want the uh, world normal and position and i also want the curvature and let's bring in cavity okay and then we want the slope so just type in just do plus here and type in slope so it will bring in slope except that it names it custom you know for some reason like it should change that to slope but it doesn't okay so now if i just i'll duplicate this and i'll call this uh, i'll take a preview material so plug this in and if i just take let's say the curvature and plug it into base color and there you go you have your texture okay so we have curvature we have occlusion I don't think so we calculated edge, we calculated cavity, so we can look at cavity, there you go. And then uh, this is the slope, so we have slope, there you go. Okay, now we are still getting these issues, okay, which uh, don't go away, you know, so like there is an option here which says enable UV boundary filling, but it doesn't do anything, so it doesn't matter. So what you want to do is... Uh, the older technique is still there, which I had done, like you can use a wrangle sop and, you know, plug all of these through a wrangle sop and work that way. But uh, the easiest one is you can use a smooth fill. Okay, so what a smooth fill will do is we do have the alpha as well, which is good. The alpha should be like plain white. So what you want to do is just take a smooth fill and plug in this into the source and the alpha into the fill area. And that goes in here and see that's fine it does a good job now the thing is I want to do that for everything so I don't want to do it for just like you know one I want to do it for all of them so the simplest way to do that is uh, in Houdini 21 you have something called as cable pack so we can use that so the cable pack essentially just combines everything into a single node and then everything that you do internally is happening on every single input and then you can extract that out okay so the way to do it is pretty simple and yeah there you go so you can also like plug in the normal let's plug in the normal here into normals and you should there you go see so it's good you know like stuff works so what i'll do is i'm going to take a cable pack yeah cable pack so normal world position position occlusion we don't need curvature cavity and custom and then set fields and call this slope yeah so this comes in here and then the alpha comes into that and so this works and then you do a cable unpack and you plug this in and over here you just say set fields from inputs and it will automatically extract everything out so it will automatically take care of you know whatever your issues were and then this takes this goes into normals and we should get the result that we want. Okay, so this is good. Now let's just make like a simple rock texture. So because we've done this much, we might as well make a rock texture. So what I want to do is let's take the curvature and we'll do a remap and we'll do a mono to RGB and let's plug this in over here to base color. There you go, that looks nice. And I can take a remap and just, you know, adjust it if I want. See, we can sort of just, you know, play around with this. So it's a little more harsh. And then here I can just adjust these colors. So let's make this, you know, like light gray and dark gray. Okay. And then let's say on top of this, I want to bring in like the slope color. So what I can do is I'll just take a constant node. 
and let's set this to RGB and this will be let's do like a green here and we'll put in a blend and I'll take a remap and that's the slope so that comes in there this comes in here there you go and then what we can do with the remap is you can actually just you know like squeeze this in like that see or you can also adjust it so we can define like you know how much it should be you can set whatever color you want you know like if i want to make this like a red or something like that will be fine too like why not so we can do stuff like this okay now uh, let's add some texture to this so what i can do is uh, i was trying out the triplane it was causing some issues but i'll show you how to work it out anyways so I can take a triplanar node and that is why we need the because if you're wondering like why we need the world position and position is because the triplanar needs that you know otherwise it doesn't work. So I'll just take this I'll take a file node I downloaded a rock texture so you can just uh, yeah that's my rock texture I'll set this to RGB where are you yeah so this will be RGB and so the, for it to work we plug in the world position and then the position and this comes into so you have options for xyz texture and you have option for just one global texture so for now i'll just keep it to a global texture and plug this in over here and this triplanar can come into this point and there you go so you can have like triplanar mapping on this and uh, which is not bad you know it looks nice and we can sort of define like the blending of this you can also define the scale so I can take this and uh, let me take a remap here so I can just sort of adjust this a little and let's try to blend it with this so we'll take a blend and plug that in and let's try multiply that's not bad but hold on let's let's try Let's try subtract. Oh, okay. Swap. That's not bad. We can try to work with this. Let's just adjust that a little bit. Yeah, that's not bad. I mean, that looks decent enough. Okay. Not the best looking. Okay. The red looks weird. Uh, let me just change that back to green or something, which looks more normal. Yeah. If you want to break up the slope, we can multiply it with like a noise map or something. You know, like I can just take a fractal noise. So we'll take a fractal noise 3D and I will plug in the position into this. And I can take the remap and we can do a multiply. Right, so I can just take this and multiply it with that. There you go. Like I can take that and just increase it a bit and adjust it. Yeah, and just increase the roughness till it looks good there you go yeah that looks nice that is good that is it this is how we can make a rock texture and like bake a rock and because this is all live the best part is that if we come up here and whatever changes i make to this will automatically reflect and be calculated and readjusted so there you go okay so if i come in here to this mountain and I make any changes to this, like let's say if I lower the element size, so it will recalculate everything and give me a different result, see. And so the same thing, like if I come into the volume warp and adjust this, let's say if I make it zero, yeah, there you go. Or let's make it like 45 and we can try adjusting like the multiplier. Anyways, that's pretty much it. So this is how you can use the new baking tools in COPS in Houdini 21.